they already did on Rogan, so that was no. Go ahead, we can re- we can repeat stuff that he did on Rogan. It's no problem. Not everybody here saw that. All right, uh, what's some of the stuff that? Oh, okay. So here's a good one. Um, George, tell us a little bit about where your obsession with dinosaurs came from. Oh, it's um when I was a kid and um, growing up, I love monsters, you know, like and what look the most like a monster look what look the more like a monster it's a dinosaur and i like paleontology and not only dinosaurs i like the the study of the organism of the past the the animal and the organism that lived in the past that are now extinct it's paleontology i like that because if you if you know the past you can predict the future and understand the present much better that's why I like that the science of the paleontology, you know, and um, it it, ma- it make you analyze the certain situation better, and you you can like I said like because you know you under you know the past, you can predict the future and understand the present. So I, that's why I really find it very fascinating. And is it true you have a megalodon tooth? Oh, I have many megalodon tooth. I have Tyrannosaurus Rex <laughs> teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex arms, I have a Carcharodontosaurus teeth, Gigantosaurus. I have, uh, oh, I have a lot. I have a, I have a, lot, I have a lot of stuff. You have a T Rex arm. Are, are very, very famous uh, teeth. It used to be a, a shark that is now extinct. It used to feed on whales. It's the biggest shark. I would say it's the most terrifying animal that ever lives in the ocean. It used to. It, it's been extinct now two million years. It used to feed on whales. It's, it was a very scary animal. So you said you have a T Rex arm. Yes. Where do, you, where do you keep this thing? You got it hanging up in your house. Where do you put it? Oh, I have it. Yes, I have it. I have it in one of my condo. Uh, there, there's a place where I I, I I invest in real estate, so I have different places. One of the place that one of the place that I own a condo. I have a, a great collection of, of uh, all uh, paleontolo- paleontology uh, stuff, like a lot of bones and and, uh, and so a lot of the stuff that I have are replica. But I have a real uh, fossil. I mean, bone. I say it's not real bones. It's fossilized. When you say a fossilized, it's not really a bone. It's a, it's a it's a signature that has been imprinted underground and the mineral give you the rest of it you know that's what is a fossilized it's not the actual animals it's the fossilized remain it's a fossil fossilized remain what do you think about jurassic park you like it or you're like oh this is bullshit what do you what, what do you what's your opinion on jurassic park no i i liked it but it's um there's a lot of stuff that that are not real for example like the they say the velociraptor velociraptor is the size of a turkey so what they identify as a velociraptor, I would say it's more, it, 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 it would look more like a Utah raptor. I would say it's more a Utah raptor than a velociraptor. And things like uh, the T-Rex cannot, a Tyrannosaurus rex, rex cannot see you if you don't move. This is a little bit BS. A T-Rex, even if, let me tell you how crazy it is that people don't know. The T-Rex has the best uh, olfactive senses of all animals of all land animal a t-rex could walk in a room even if he's blind and hunt you that's how good he could pinpoint only with his no only with his smell he could pinpoint a, 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 a place and eat it even if he was blind that's how uh, crazy it was you know but t-rex is not well portrayed in uh, jurassic park if you if you know the fact uh, and the study they know that because they study the brain of the t-rex so when they study the brain of a T-Rex, the olfactive uh, part of the brain, they see it's very well developed, much, much better than a dog. So not only that he could, he had a very good binocular vision, and he could also smell. So even if he was blind, he was able to smell. And he had the, the biggest uh, 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 bite force of, of land animal. He could he literally crush bones. So he was not only eating the flesh, he was crushing bones. So the T-Rex was... I would say because he died, he's one of the last dinosaurs. Imagine he was probably the most involved predatory animal of all time because for millions of years, dinosaurs have involved 
And the last of his kind of Tyrannosaurus Rex was pretty much the the apex predator. He was not the biggest carnivore of all time. He was pre probably the the most involved. So it it, it was a it was a crazy animal. Have you seen the movie Meg, the Megalodon movie? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> what did you think about that? I did. Well, it, think about it's it? one, once again, it's a, it's a movie. They try to make it and tr like a new version, new version of Jaws. Uh, Megalodon, it's a it's a it's a very terrifying. It, 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 Megalodon, Megalodon used to live after the dinosaur, after the dinosaur uh, went extinct. So Megalodon is a different animal. He lived in a different period of time. He used to feed on wells, but there is a lot of different animal that could face Meg Megalodon at the time that could defend. Uh, Leviathan, uh, the, there are different carnivorous whales. They used to prey on whales as well that could challenge Megalodon. It would. I wish I would have been there to see really what happened at that time. It was. It would. If I would have a time machine and go back in the past, that's that's what I would do to to go study the, these animals. It would be very very fascinating fascinating stuff. Sounds horrifying. I'd, I'd stay as far away from T-Rexes if I had a time machine. But uh, George, like, oh, I wish just, I was there. Just to just to show you <laughs> yeah. a, just to show you a fact, guys. Just to show you a fact. You know, with coronavirus happening now, sometimes we realize we're not the king of the universe. Just to just to show you a fact, we are closer in uh, of uh, we are closer to T-Rex. Just to show you how long the dinosaurs. So the planet really belongs to the dinosaurs. We live closer to T-Rex than T-Rex live to Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus is a dinosaur, I'm sure you know. It's the one with, with plague on his back. You know, he had like a, uh, um, uh, uh, like a squ squares on his back, you know, rectangular plague on his back with spike on his tail. So this, this dinosaur, his name is the Stegosaurus. So we're, we are closer in time than to Tyrannosaurus Rex. 66 million years then Tyrannosaurus Rex is to Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus used to live in the Jurassic 150 52 million years so it gives you a, a time span of that's how crazy it is so the dinosaurs really they're the one that that are the master of the of the planet in terms of time they live much longer than us George, I have yeah, one of my nice. one of my producers just sent me a message. He wanted me to ask if you've seen this thing that the T Rex has feathers. What do you think? Do you think T Rex has had feathers or no? So I, I have a chance to to talk and to 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 travel the world and met many great uh, paleontologists, and that was a subject subject of discussion. They most of them believe that T Rex had feathers. Because what we know, we don't know much about dinosaur because the, it's it takes very special condition for an animal to fossilize, and in order that is remain left a print for millions of, of years, it takes a, a very incredible uh, situation, and it, it doesn't happen every day. You know, it's it every for every living creature, it takes very special condition. So we don't have the knowledge of every. We don't know a lot. About dinosaurs, but from what we know, many paleontologists, many experts, and I give you the word of the expert, what they mostly believe Tyrannosaurus Rex had feathers, especially when he was young, but probably lost much of his feather or kept kept some, but most of his feather he had it when he was a baby to to keep the to keep the warm, keep the heat. Like a like a bird, like a giant bird, you know. It's crazy. They're, they're non-avian non birds. So T-Rex had probably feathers. I, I would believe it. But we don't, we don't have the evidence that a Tyrannosaurus Rex, for what I know, we don't have the evidence that T-Rex, an adult T-Rex, had feathers. But I believe he did. And most paleontologists would believe that as well, that I talked with. Uh, George, all can right. You... So, go ahead. Go Sorry, ahead. George. No, you, you I was going to say, it. can you tell us can you tell us what the experience was like uh, with that silverback gorilla that you posted on your Instagram a while ago? You had the, you had an instance where you guys were like with that silverback and the silverback like got pissed or something. Yeah, so I had a chance. I, I went to Rwanda. And Rwanda is, is a very beautiful country. 
And I went, and when I went there, I uh, I had a chance to go visit the gorilla. And when you get to the the place, it's near a, a volcano. It's in a mountain. And the way it works is the the gorilla are the apex uh, apes. You know, they're uh, the strongest, so they live on the top mountain. So when you arrive on site, it's away from the city of Kigali. It's maybe two, two, three hours away from the city. So you're, you're in the middle of nowhere. So you arrive there and now you have a course and the expert, they tell you what to do and what to not do. They tell you, don't point the gorilla with your finger. Don't speak loud. Don't ever touch the female and the kids. And every guide, every day, Go with the same family of gorilla, so the the family of gorilla are used to see the guide, but uh, and the the guide are expert. They they can read the the, the physical uh, move of the gorilla. If the gorilla is angry or sad or he's pissed off, so they know it. They, they they're really they really never know one hundred percent, but they because it's an animal, so it's a it's a it's not a domestic animal. It's a, it's a, a savage. Uh, it's it's a, it's an animal. So they give you, they explain you the rules, you know, and everything. And then after you take a walk, you go up in the mountain. And after after they, they carry you with a truck, but after there is no, there's no way. So you have to walk. And when I went there, they explained to you that if the gorilla, the gorilla charge you, don't try to run away because you cannot outrun a gorilla. You cannot outclimb a gorilla. And, you know, the only thing you can do is, is go in the water because the gorilla can swim, but there's no water. It's in, the, it's in the, a mountain. So I went there and I was with a bunch of older people when I went there. And um, I remember uh, the gorilla, we spent a few minutes watching the gorilla and I, I, and I behaved very well. And the gorilla looked at me and at one point he decided to come towards me. And I was very scared. So what I did is... I get out of the way and I, I put myself into a submissive pause that what they told you, they told, they explained me to do it, a, a case like this happened. So I put myself on the knee and I went like this, I looked down and the gorilla he stopped right behind my back and i never been scared like this in my life. So I remember I'm like this and then he passed and then I, and then I look at, I look behind his right, like one inch, he barely, like he almost touched me. I look. And I see his back, his muscle, and I'm like, oh my God. And the guy gave me his hand and I, and I went to join the rest of the group, but I got so scared. And the guy, he explained to me that the reason why the gorilla came towards me and turned his back to me, it's because he wanted, he wanted me, he wanted to show me that I'm not a threat to him. And it, 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 because he turned his back by exposing his more, um, uh, how do you say in English is, is more uh, because he's turned his back to me that he showed me that I'm not I'm not scared of you. You're nothing is nothing you can do. I'm turning my back. So it was like a not a threat ch challenge, but it was like showing me that who's the boss. So and I, I was scared. Oh, my God. I, I, I remember it. I will remember for the rest of my life. How do you think if you guys could take had a, a silver back, but you had both of you two on one. Do you think you guys would stand a chance against a gorilla if you had both of you? Absolutely my friend, not. I believe even if we, if we, I believe even if you have uh, three George St. Pierre and three Gordon Ryan, you cannot take a, a silver back. We will need the AK-47 to to get him. John, John was telling us a story once about this. They were doing this uh, experiment with gorillas, and uh, they were like trying to measure how strong they were. And uh, one of the gorillas, uh, there was some instance where. Uh, there was like workout equipment in a room and one of the gorillas uh, was trying to get a 45 pound plate out of, out of its way. And it wasn't mad or anything. It just like wanted to get the plate out of its way. It took a 45 pound plate like this and just frisbeed it across the room. Like not even like <laughs> just trying to throw it. It's like, Oh, this is in my way. And just threw it like 25 feet across the room. And just like, it like broke the side. Like it's insane how strong they are. When I when I was in when I was there, I I asked the guide, "What is the worst thing that have happened to him?" And he didn't want to tell me in the beginning, but after a while, I kept asking him, and I was very polite, and he started to like me. So he, he told me because he, he didn't want us to to scare the tourists. So he told me that a few years before, a bunch of young uh, guys showed showed up, and they were from U.S. They were American, like you guys. <laughs> And they were, they, one of them was very, 
very loud and the guy told him repetitively to not be that loud you know he was keeping making a lot of joke and after 40 40 40 minutes the, the gorilla could clearly show a sign that he got pissed up and annoyed by the group that was there and the guy told the group said okay i think we're gonna finish finish the trekking the the gorilla trekking now and the the, the tourists start to complain hey we pay it's supposed to be an hour we have 20 minutes left and the guide was like yeah but the gorilla seems very pissed up if i look at his body language but and they were like no we, we need to stay we'll pay you for this blah 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 so he decided to stay but the gorilla got pissed off at one point apparently he grabbed one of the tourists by the ankle and carry him for like he, he told me in meter like uh, five like uh, five meter for you is like uh, 15 20 feet in the jungle in the dense jungle and then let, let him go like a like a garbage bag and the guy was full of scratch he, he, he survived he had no uh, he had no uh, serious injuries but it just show you how if he want to get rear of you he'll get rear of you and there is nothing you can do and you're in the middle of the jungle no near hospital there and you're in a foreign country in, in the middle of africa it's not like you, the same in us or canada you know so if you better believe you bet you better behave well and listen to what the expert told you to do because you can be in big big trouble there i have something i've thought about a bunch and i want to ask your opinion on it if you were going to walk into the jungle and you had to come across a group of gorillas or a group of chimpanzees which one would you be more scared of that i know the answer the, the the gorilla the the gorilla are not territorial they i will accept you if you behave well the chimp are very territorial the chimp will kill you and that's what the expert told me because i asked him exactly the same question i said why we don't we don't go see the chimp and apparently if they went the way they kill you is very crazy they rip off your balls your genital they break your finger and take off the the skin of the face so you cannot reproduce, you cannot climb away, and they take away your identity. Of course, a gorilla is much stronger than a, than a chimp, but you have more chance, I believe, in nature, because they're not domesticated. They're, you have more chance to, to survive in a group of gorilla than in a, in a group of chimp. That's what I've been told by I, the guide. I 100% agree with you. Chim chimps are mean. They're nasty little bastards. I would not want to come across a group of chimps. You see about the wars uh, they get into they, with each other and stuff. Uh, 